Brooks. We're now joined in studio by the one, the only Tyson Bajan. How are you doing today, Tyson? I'm doing good. I appreciate you guys having me. Thanks for uh, coming in. I know you got a busy schedule here as you just got back in, into West Virginia about a week and a half ago. Uh, what's this journey been like for you so far? Oh, man. I don't, it's been... It's been very eye-opening. You know, I feel like I've lived a whole nother life in these, you know, just from January 1st to now, you know, living down in Florida, first time being away from home for an extended amount of time away from my family in a completely different area that I was unfamiliar with, um, which I think really allowed me to, to lock in on in every facet and category of my life, which was good. Then going to Mobile for the Senior Bowl, learning a, a NFL style offense, being coached by NFL coaches and being and playing with dudes that are gonna play in the NFL uh, was, was was huge, I think for my growth and development and my, my confidence mentally. And then going to the combine showing out there, I think it all came full circle. And then after that, I was excited to come home and begin to go through the script and get ready for my pro day. Tyson, I wanted to start at the Senior Bowl and you mentioned it. Uh, not only did you get you know all those experiences, but you were able to get you know a ton of reps in the actual game. Um, how do you think your performance was, and uh, just throughout the week at the practices and in the game itself? I thought the performance it was fun. I think that that was the only fun part of the whole week. Every other every other minute of the week was was accounted for with with meetings. Uh, whether that be with NFL teams or team meetings because you, you're installing an offense. So it's basically like you're in the middle of camp, but then you also for four hours a day have to go meet with NFL personnel. So it was, you know, our schedule was pretty stacked. They they definitely tried to wear and tear on you mentally and physically. So I was happy once I got in the game, especially the situation we were in, we were down. So we knew we had to throw the ball, um, which I was perfectly fine with. And then um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I, you know, I did what I think what I was supposed to do. You know, I showed that I was on the right field. There was no, there was no drop off whenever I came in. If, if anything, you know, I feel like the the play kind of rose a little bit, um, and I had a lot of fun doing it. Family got to be there. It was a good day, so it, it was a lot of fun. And then, of course, you moved on to Indianapolis, down to going from the sort of in game practice and playing against these other players to that on-field workout, all the athleticism type of drills that you had to do. What was that experience like training for the combine and then getting out on the field in front of you know all the cameras, all the scouts, all those other quarterbacks and being out there to show what you had to offer? It was good. I thought that um, obviously the whole reason of going down to Florida and training is to get ready for Indianapolis um, more so than even the Senior Bowl. Your Senior Bowl, you're kind of just the player you are, and you're going to go and you're going to do what you what you normally do, you know, in a game time setting. But Indianapolis, just a whole different aspect of just the athleticism testing, and then kind of the throwing being secondary in your mind because you just all the training that's been in is mostly been geared towards all the athletic parts. But also, once you get to that time where you're on the field, you're kind of ready for the whole thing to be over. So it's being able to like rewire your mind and be like, all right, well, hold up. The whole reason I left home, the whole reason I've been training is to do this right there. So it was so much, it was so much mental just being able to stay locked in, being able to kind of ignore all the personnel and cameras that were around and try to focus um, and, and act as if you were the only one in the stadium. That was the hardest part because all the training had been done. I did everything right. Uh, nutrition wise um, athleticism wise um, quarterback wise I had done all the work so I knew I was prepared so it was more so just being able to calm down and be able to um, just put my best performance up like nobody was there watching which so which I thought I was able to accomplish and I had a you know a lot of fun again and it was a good day we had talked to your dad at something I can't remember where we were oh it might have been a Marksburg basketball basketball game or something mm -hmm. uh, he had told us that you were down in Florida uh, with Jesse Carell, your former offensive, one of your former offensive coordinators, how was that kind of a big help for you to, you know, be familiar with somebody down there while you go through all this? Yeah, it was huge. It was huge. We had Coach Carell um, there at the house we were living at from Monday to Thursday. He would show up Monday around lunchtime, and he would leave Thursday around lunchtime, and. You know, they, the facility I was at did a good job. It was a one-stop shop. They had all my meals there, all the workout plans, all the sprinting um, gigs down there, throwing sessions. It was all in the same spot, recovery. Everything was in the same spot. So whenever I was, you know, I tried to live there, 
as long as I could throughout the day because I knew I'd be bored as soon as I got home. But whenever I did get home, it was good. We had a board in the house, and we would just it was just all mental preparation, board work, situation, just talking through it, verbalizing everything so that when the interviews came, you know, I already felt pretty confident at it, but that was just kind of putting the cherry on top with the mental aspect of the game. And we got really tight, so it was uh, it was good. What's the uh, feedback been like from scouts and uh, in your meetings during the combine and senior or senior bowl? Yeah, I think I I went into every meeting, every interview with with teams as if um, it was you know the deciding factor on if I was going to get picked up or not. I knew it was the most important part, so I was severely locked into those meetings so I feel as if I absolutely killed every single one of them and every single one we kind of left it was it was pretty similar every one they were like hey man you did a really good job we're impressed and there was no question that they asked that could stump me up because you know I don't have any off the field uh, issues I don't have any disciplinary issues within the team ever um, so being able to check those boxes and then being able to just whatever football questions they asked me be able to literally explain it like they, like it's never been explained to them before in like extreme depth and going over above and beyond just so trying to give them something to remember be like hey you know we trust this dude we think he's mentally and physically you know ready for this we we trust this pick um so i felt really good with all the interviews felt that they all went extremely well and you know from my perspective every team was pretty impressed with the with the interview i had now they could just be blowing smoke, but <laughs> I like to, you know, I like, I thought I killed it. And there was no question where I, where I hesitated, you know, stumbled over my words. Uh, it was all, it was all smooth sailing in the interview process. How many teams have you uh, met with? Um, so everybody got to meet with every team at the okay. senior bowl. I met with 16, 15, 16 teams at the combine. And then uh, last week I met with the Packers. This week I've got a meeting set up with the Cardinals, the Buccaneers, and the Bengals uh, this coming week. For the most part, it seems like teams that need quarterbacks. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's exciting. Definitely it's exciting. got to give these, you These something. interviews, now that I'm home, it's a lot more football-oriented. You know, they already know, you know, my background, where I, yeah. where I grew up, who I grew up with, where I'm from, you know, all that, all that stuff that I had to explain to, to everybody initially. So now it's kind of more football-oriented, which, um, which is exciting. Now, during this process, you're kind of testing yourself in a lot of different ways. Obviously, training for the combine is very physical. Then you're going through all these interviews. They're trying to testing you mentally, going through these, you know, in-game stuff at the Senior Bowl. Has there been any part of this whole process that stood out to you as maybe the most challenging, most difficult, or something that you had to, like, put the most preparation to more so than all the other parts of it uh, compared to all the others? Um, well, I mean, athletically... You know the the forty. I would say I had to really lock in on that, um, just out of fear of looking crazy at the combine. Uh, so that <laughs> athletically was it. And I, you know, running a four seven, that was so like. Look, when I looked up there and saw four seven, I was like, wow, like let's go. Like that's what that was what I was. That's what I wanted to run. Um, you know, the jumps. I was confident with the jumps, and we started with the jumps first, so I knew that would give me, you know, some good momentum. I jumped well, and then right into the forty, did that well, and then after that, I was just ready to cut it loose. So, um, I would say the forty was a pressure point there, but then everything else is just is just mental. I know that um, athletically, in the measurables, I measure up with in, right there with any quarterback that's ever been to the combine who did really good, who did really bad, I'm right and I'm right in the middle of all that. So I know that physically I'm not lacking in any area. It's all going to be the mental aspect of everything. So that's kind of where a lot of my focus has been, being able to understand, you know, plays, you know, word recall, memory, being able to just get my mind right and being able to just con constantly put myself in a position and do things that make me feel confident and make me feel like I'm ready to answer, you know, everything in the world. So that's kind of where my training is right now and how I'm preparing going forward. So Colin is at in Texas for a wedding, so he missed the uh, interview with you, but he had a question he wanted to ask. During the Senior Bowl, uh, when you were playing, the commentators said, you know, stuff about there being a learning curve going from D2 to playing with all these D1 guys. Has there actually been a learning curve, or are they just blowing smoke? No, there's no learning curve, and there's no learning curve. All the things I did at the Senior Bowl were plays that I had ran at one time or another in college. Um, throwing to the receivers, 
yeah, I didn't have to speed up my arm. I didn't have to put more on the ball than I normally would. Um, and that I, I might just that might just be a coincidence just of who I am. Maybe for a lot of other D2 players it is. But I think with the amount of work that I put in and the amount of preparation that I like I constantly was just preparing for the for for the bowl game like for years before the bowl game. And the same thing with the combine. Like, I didn't notice any difference thrown to those dudes um, than I did at any practice I was ever at at Shepard. I think the only difference, not the, not the physicality of the trenches, but the size of the trenches was different. That was the only thing I noticed. Instead of six threes um, blocking in front of me, you got six fives. And, you know, that is, and they're a little bit more wide, which that was the only thing I noticed. It didn't affect my gameplay um, at all. Um, but that was the that was the difference that that I noticed. What, I guess, what stage in the process are you in now in terms of anything that you plan on doing between now and the draft? Yeah, so I've got my pro day March twenty eighth. Uh, not doing any of the testing because I already tested. But I know that you know we got me as well as a handful of other you know dudes that are you know participating in the pro day at Shepherd. And um, so I've got a throwing script, five dudes about 55, 60 throws, um, put on a little show, uh, a little more throw-oriented. You know, they already got to see my times. They know what that looks like. They got to see a little bit of, you know, throwing. But now being able to get everybody to come to Shepherdstown um, and see me kind of just work through um, every throw in the book on the 28th. And, you know, you talk about everybody coming to Shepherdstown. We know during the season, every week, there's a few scouts coming, and scouts discovered some of your teammates as well. Mm -hmm. How much do you think that probably the fact that there will be 32 teams at your pro day is going to help, you know, the other guys like Joey Fisher, Ronnie Brown, and, you know, I think Solomon Alexander is also going to be there as well. How is that going to help other guys knowing that, you know, you're the guy that everybody's looking for, but maybe they could find somebody else? Yeah, I think I, it's awesome. You know, anytime I can help, uh, you know, and I think we're helping each other at this point. I think Joey's got um, just as big of a just as big of a chance of getting drafted as I do in my eyes. Now, I might be wrong. I might be right. I have no clue. He might have a way better chance than me. I might have a way better chance than him. I have no clue. Um, so I know we kind of been piggybacking off of each other. And then, you know, if we can sneak other dudes in like Ronnie Brown, Brian Walker, and um, and Solo, um, that's just better for Shepard and, and better for their image and recruiting going down the line. So, um, you know, putting them on, helping them out, you know, any way I can, you know, that that's just this is good for the community as a whole. So, uh, Tyson, I think that the point in your uh, football career that you're in right now is kind of the most interesting one to me personally, like on a personal level for a player, because you've gone through high school here at Martinsburg, quarterback, state championship level teams, so this is the state powerhouse, got to Shepard, won the starting quarterback job as a freshman, went through, were able to win the Harlan Hill, break these records, so now you're getting to the point where you've kind of spent a lot of your football career being that guy on the top of the food chain. Mm -hmm. And now you're being going from that big fish in the small pond to kind of the, the fish being thrown into the deep waters. So how do you kind of uh, internalize that mentally? Is that something you think about? Like, I've always known you to be a humble guy, mm -hmm. but it's something. How do you uh, just think about that? How does it kind of what's your perspective on that? Yeah, this is a weird. This is a weird time. Uh, the playing part, you know, I am a humble guy. I almost feel like I'm tired of being super, like so humble. Like, not that I'm not going to be humble, but I think I've almost overcompensated um, and put a little too much respect on on the competition that I'm going against. Every single game at Shepherd I ever played in, I felt like I was the underdog, and that that I had to beat them, that they didn't have to beat me. For whatever reason, like Lockhaven, I was <laughs> so nervous to play in that game because I just am, I just like, I don't know why, I just have that mentality. So I think going forward, uh, little fish getting thrown in the big pond, um, just understanding, just trusting my work, trusting my process, trusting that I'm prepared. Um, and I believe everything will take care of itself. I have a hard time believing that they'll be able to, you know, say the worst comes to worst, I don't get drafted. And I do get, as long as, if I get picked up anywhere and they let me put my foot in the door, I just have a really hard time believing that they'll be able to keep me out. Like, I just feel like it'll just be constant work mentally and physically on my end 
um, and just continuing to get better every day. And as far as this weird time frame, you know, I'm, just, I'm not in school anymore. I'm not affiliated with any team right now. I'm just kind of in the world, you know, kind of on my own, unemployed at, at the moment. And just right now, that's the, that's the goal is to be employed um, here in a couple months by a football team. Tyson, when you uh, get ready for the draft, you know, obviously you would want to play for any team that wants you. Uh, but do you have maybe an ideal situation that you'd want to go into, or is it more so just you know wherever you end up, you'll you'll kind of roll with it? No, I think that just the NFL as a whole is pretty ideal, and I, I just want to go where where I'm wanted, where I, where you know a team has somebody in the in the room that felt that I was a player that they could take a chance on. And, you know, as soon as I get that, all I want to be is an asset to the team and help them get better, whatever whatever that looks like. So that's kind of my goal going forward. I have absolutely no care in the world for where I go and who I play for. Um, them wanting and feeling the need to take a chance on me is enough for me to be to be all in. Uh, before we end this interview here, I want to ask you about your brother. He finally makes the decision. He's going to go to Shepard, follow in your footsteps. Um, obviously, that's what he's probably wanted to do the whole time that you've been there. Mm. How does that make you feel as an older brother, knowing that, that that's going to happen? Yeah, it's awesome. You know, I trust Coach McCook with everything in my, in my whole life and, and in my heart. And, you know, I love Ezra like crazy and he's so much better than I was like mentally and physically going into a freshman season just because of the resources that he's been able to have because of me so I'm so confident that he's just gonna you know tear it up and be so ready to go you know from the get-go and he's just another one of those dudes that you know you're not gonna be able to hold him down for long he's just gonna continue to continue to get better find ways um to, to get on that field, whether that be as a leader, as a, you know, whatever it is, he's going to figure it out. So I'm excited to go to, I'm excited for that. I'm excited to go to a Shepherd game where I'm stress free and I'm excited to, you know. Well, I'll, we hope you can't go to a Shepherd game this fall. Well, you know, I'm, hoping, week, to, I'm hoping, hoping to at least be able to make it to one or two, but. Um, <laughs> Depends on where he goes to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that is true. Yeah, it's so, regional. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about all that. Ezra's the man. He's going to kill it. Um, and he's playing for a good head coach, so. There you go. Thanks for coming in and, uh, you know, taking some time with us, and we'll see you down at your pro day. Yes, sir. I appreciate y'all.